in this video I'm out in the amazing autumn woodland talking about why woodland photography is so difficult and show you exactly what to look for so you can take better woodland images. Oh, morning everybody, a fantastic to see you all again. So I'm still in the Lake District with these amazing autumn colours. Autumn's a little bit late this year but it is spectacular and um, we're going to talk all about woodland photography today. I'm going to hopefully find some good shots, talk a little bit about the things that I've always found difficult with woodland photography and share some tips. So let's go. Right, so what is that mistake? Oh, it's getting foggy. Oh, I just saw the fog coming in. Anyway, what is that mistake? So, well, it's distractions. Um, it's, it's so difficult in woodland to avoid distractions, but distractions are often the cause of what makes a woodland photo not quite work. So in this case, we've got some sky up there. Uh, maybe this bush here would distract you a little bit. Um, and what I'm gonna do throughout the, the video is hopefully give you tips to get over that and come up with techniques to remove some of those distractions and, and have an image that just sort of gels together a little bit better. If we get some of this mist here, it'd be great. So I'm just walking into a shot here, which actually looks half decent, but if you go too wide here, then you get that branch up there, which you, you, your, your instinct is that will look good, but I think it distracts that branch up there. And also we've got a little bit of the sky up there, but if you just zoom in, so if you zoom in to like 50 mil, then you can see that this is a much nicer shot. Um, you know, it, it just looks a little bit better. Then you've just got to be careful of your positioning left and right to make sure you've not got any distractions where um, some of the trees might overlap each other. So that's the next important thing. But I'll take a quick shot of this um, and then we'll keep going. So this isn't the best of a photo, but another distraction I spotted was the log leaning against the tree. Now, I don't really like to move large things like that, but you could remove it afterwards in Photoshop. You've got to take the call of whether you want to do that, but here, I did it. I think it looks a little bit better. Okay, so I've stopped here, set my camera up, got a shot that I thought worked, but it doesn't really work. And, it, and it's because of this mistake really, which is just messiness and um, having something that just distracts your, your eye. So I'll, I'll show you, I'll just run in the scene and show you what I mean. So this tree here, this tree, I think it'd be nice if it was dead, but because it's got this sort of foliage on, the holly on, then I just think it, it looks a bit sort of overcomplicated and um, it just is messy. And, and so everything doesn't gel together. And that's a good example, I think, of something that sort of half works, but it ruins the shot, I think, because your eye's drawn to it too much. It's quite these dark foliage. But we'll keep going. The sun's coming out now, which looks pretty spectacular up there, but you've got to be careful about that in the woodland. Oh, it's so good here. Wow. Can you feel the wind? Say you do, it's how it all begins. Then comes reason, then purpose. Well, you will find your way. Right, so I found a, a shot here that which is there was a bit of mist and it, it was a bit better when the mist was there. But I think it's I think it's purposeful and that's that's one of the ways of getting rid of mess really. Just being really purposeful about where you're placing things. So here I've got this diagonal line of the tree trunk here, and then I've got another diagonal line opposing that of the tree trunk in the background, and then nice verticals that sort of frame the shot a little bit. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is that um, this tree is a little bit too dominant at, at the front, but I don't think there's too much mess here. I think it's quite purposeful. There's nothing that distracts your eye too much, um, apart from maybe just the tree in the top right. Um, we just had the most amazing rainbow. Um, I'll show you the footage now before I show you this photo, but it was, oh my word, I threw my drone. It was so incredible. Doesn't get better than this. You can ask a spring how it is when the buds are bursting. You can watch the birds when they fly across the world. We 
weights can't lift you up. You can find a way to drop them. When the new ones weigh you down, you'll be under Right, I'm going to just jump into the scene here and explain why this doesn't work. I first thought that this tree here in the middle would look nice. The sun wasn't out for a start, um, but then when I set it up, the problem is that you have the trees on this side that are quite tightly packed, the trees on this side which are quite tightly packed, and then as soon as the sun comes out in woodland photography, it's so hard. Unless you're shooting into the sun, you get like lots of shadows. So like the area down at the just base of that tree, there's a shadow. The top of the tree there's lighter bits in the background loads and loads of distractions and all those distractions add up to just a complicated mess so it's nowhere near as good it's so hard to do photography in woodlands anyway but when you're doing photography in woodlands and you've got sunlight you've got to be super careful so i could wait a little bit for the sunlight to go down but i've still got these other distractions so this is a no and i just move on um but yeah woodland Photography isn't easy. Right, this is nothing about woodland photography, but there are trees in here and it'd be wrong not to show you this because it is so incredible. Um, I'm just looking back into the woodland I've just walked out of and you can see I've got these amazing trees here. I'm not too bothered that this tree's going into the sky because it, it sort of works. Um, and, it, and there's a nice wall, there's the mountains in the background, and I think there might be a rainbow in a second. This looks so good. It really doesn't get better than this. This is so, so good. So we just need to wait for the sun a little bit. Okay, this just looks so spectacular now. The, the, the sun's just lighting up these trees. Um, and we've got like, a really nice foreground to it. And you can see the mountains in the background are just getting a little bit of rain. So the clouds just really interesting in the background. I think what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna do a pano so I can get a little bit more megapixels because I feel like this might end up being a really nice pano. So I'm just gonna set my camera up and basically I'm just going to bracket it and just do a pano across. I think this will be so nice. Oh, there's a rainbow just about to appear now, I think. But um, one of the things that I um, that's important here is that this bottom part of the, the scene is really simple and it draws your eye in. So the same thing relates to any type of photography really, that simplicity, less mess, um, you know, purposefulness in the photo makes a really big difference. And I've got to get this now because the, the, the rainbow is about to appear. So, oh my word, here comes the rainbow. Okay, there's a severe lack of trees for this woodland video now, but I got a little bit carried away, kept going up, and I found this beautiful view here. So it'd be wrong not to take it, wouldn't it? There's a little tarn here, mini tarn. Don't know what a mic, I don't know what a mini tarn's called, but anyway. I've taken a shot with the tarn, but I actually quite like a shot through here without the tarn. So I'm gonna take that. Okay, it's the afternoon now. We're down off the hill that we're on before and I'm just walking down a road actually to try and find some woodland. I just spotted this scene here. So I think this is a good example. Um, there's a barn in here as well, but it's a good example of just having really purposefully placed things and quite simplistic um, 
elements in a scene that's there's nothing too distracting so i've got the tree on the right hand side and the roots which sort of connect well to the tree the grass sort of leads your eye through the scene because it's in different places in the scene but it isn't distracting we've got the branch on the left hand side which sort of helps to sort of bring your eye in from the left and then we've got this barn you know which is the the focal point really the, the, the bit that you're going to and i think this is a really good example of there being lots of elements but they're all very purposefully placed in my composition um it's difficult to do that you know but sometimes something just pops out so i thought i'd show you this hopefully we'll find some woodlands and i can show you some more examples i think this is a great example of a scene with lots of parts that all work harmoniously together I was lucky with the sheep just coming into the picture here and creating a nice diagonal from the bottom right up towards the hut. But yeah, I like this. I think it all sort of gels together and there's nothing too distracting in the image. Oh, well. After walking through a lot more woodland and struggling to find anything, woodland photography is difficult. Everything was really messy. I didn't want to make that mistake that I've made so many times before and just take it because it's colourful. I found something that ideally would be a little bit more colourful, but it, I, I actually like the shapes of it and the simplicity of it. So I've got these three trees here, one that's fallen down and these other two. And then I just really like the fact that the grasses are really simple, the background's really simple. Everything in this scene is really nice and simple and well aligned. And the, the, the trees in the background sort of connect to these foreground trees. So I actually think this might work quite well as a quite tight up shot or one that's a little bit wider. So I could try and include the trees up here or I could go a little bit tighter and just, just include these trees here. And I think that would work really well as well. So yeah. It's so beautiful everywhere, but it's so hard to find a composition. I'm gonna keep trying, keep trying. I'll get something good. I've included this slightly wider shot here with the trees in the top right. I like the trunks that sort of lead in of the foreground trees, but I'm not 100% sure about this shot. Let me know in the comments what you think. I thought I'd show you this, it's the next day now, and um, this is a good example, I think, of something that's quite complex yet a little bit more structured. So I've got these trees on the left hand side that sort of anchor your left hand side, and then the trees sort of behind me here are all sort of quite well separated, and this tree's separated as well. So again, everything's just purposeful. There's nothing too distracting, maybe the top right hand corner a little bit, um, but this is not misty and it works pretty well. The colors are just so incredible. When it rains like this, it's so fantastic. And I'll show you quickly, actually, I've got a polarizer on, let me just show you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, if I just turn this, just look at the difference it makes. So this is fully polarized, that's unpolarized. And I like it like about there, just a little bit polarised. Looks fantastic. Well, look at this. I found this absolutely incredible little scene here with this oak tree, that oak tree and the beech tree over there. Make a really nice sort of trio of trees and the water in the background, so, so incredible. Again, the simplicity of it is that um, there's complexity, but the simplicity comes together because of the positioning of these three trees, and that works really, really well. So, um, yeah, and then I've tied in some of the dying ferns together as well, which I think works pretty well. It's so incredible here. Oh, what? An incredible, incredible trip this has been. On reflection on this image, 
I think it might just be a little bit unbalanced. I feel this foreground tree is just a little bit too dominant. I think the elements work quite well, but yeah, this foreground tree is just a little bit too big in the scene. That was amazing in the Lake District. Those rainbows are incredible. I hope you like the woodland stuff. I'm gonna go on to a few other tips in a second. Before I do that, I just wanna thank this week's sponsor and that's Soul Digital. If you're looking to print your own stuff, especially books or calendars or something like that, then they're fantastic. I've used them for so many things. Um, I recently did a, a book of um, pebbles. <laughs> so, um, all, all some fantastic photos of pebbles. This, this makes a great gift for Christmas. And they're doing a really good 50% off at the moment with the link in the description below. And more on that in a second. I wanted to mention calendars because a lot of people ask where I get my calendar printed. Well, it isn't Sol Digital, but they do do calendars. And I have to say that their calendars are easily as good quality as mine. The most important thing when you're printing something is colors. And the colors, this is one that I had done with them, um, are so good. And the paper's so good. Um, but color reproduction is so difficult, but they do it really, really well. You can design your own calendar with them, but you can also make other things as well. And just to prove that, I did some random things. So this is something I've done before, which is pebbles, um, a little acrylic of pebbles. I made a tin because um, I want to put some of my photography stuff in. So I thought I might as well have a tin with my photo on it. Pretty cool. Um, and then I've also got this um, because they do wall art as well. Um, so I did this because I want to get some, um, I don't really see it very well, can you? But I want to get um, the Aurora on my wall. And this is an acrylic, framed acrylic, which looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and then randomly, and finally, <laughs> I had to have a pebbles cushion. It was on there. Couldn't, couldn't say no to it, could I? Anyway, um, joking aside, they are really good. There's a 50% link in the description of everything everything on their site. So if you want to get 50% off with Sol Digital, check out the link. Okay, back to these woodland photos. On the woodland photos, obviously these photos that I took, um, you know, weren't the best ever photos. What I wanted to try and do in the video was just try and explain the thought process that goes in my head. And one of the big things is that I try and avoid distractions. Um, I didn't get the most amazing photos in that session, but Woodland photography is hard and it isn't just about avoiding distractions. Being purposeful is really important as well as I showed in this image. I just wanna show a few other things. I, I showed this image in, in the um, video as well, just at the end. But when I was taking this, I also took this image and this is a good example of something that's just a little bit of a distraction that I think just sort of draws your eye a little bit on, on this image. So this area down here where I've got this line you know, you, the, the rest of it's quite nice, but then this is a little bit distraction, distracting, so I'd, I'd, I'd worry about that. I took this image, which was the most amazing light. One of those rare times where I stop by the side of the road, jump out and try and get a photo. And I got this image, which I think works incredibly well. But while I was trying to get this image and I was walking up, I took this image. And there's that, always that thing where you think, oh, I just want to include more. And I like this tree, it was backlit. But I feel like, this is a good example of where I've included too much. You know, the, the shot was just a little bit further down, just doing that rather than including this tree as well. Um, so I just walked a little bit further down here, got very wet feet and then got that shot. Another example of when I was doing this at the side of the road and why side of the road photography doesn't work because I was rushing was this shot. And I think this is almost decent. Um, you know, I like this bit of tree here. Um, it's It seems purposefully put there, you know, they've got some nice backlighting of these trees here, but I really messed up on this one. Where, where you've got a tree coming down like that and it's just touching the, the background, it, it needed some space. It either needed to be more over it like this or some space. And otherwise this just becomes a real distraction. I see that quite a lot on photos when I'm judging photo competitions and, and, and whatever else. So if you've got photos, that's a really good thing to check. Some of the shots that I took later on, again, this is a good example of something what I've done with a bit of purpose. Um, I think, you know, just being really thoughtful about your woodland photography, trying to get rid of any distractions that you can. And, and if you really can get out in fog, I didn't have any fog when I was in the Lake District, but fog makes a really big difference. Okay, I'll leave you with the video of that rainbow. 
it was something super special to see four rainbows in a go, which was actually created from a reflection of the sun coming off the lake, creating a sort of a, a virtual sun effectively that, that was then shining through the raindrops and creating two double rainbows was very special. Until next Sunday, bye.